Salvatore, um, Sofreya, and also Stephanie, who, Claire, um, his partner, and they're going to join us for a little chat. Thank you. All right, so I, I must admit I knew very little about Salvatore, and um, Stephanie currently... You change your mind? If you no, I'm oh, <laughs> so amazed. Look, and, I, and she dropped in this video, which you all got a leaflet if you're interested in buying it uh, or purchasing it. Um, it's really fascinating. So this first bit is a little bit about um, Richard, the fellow who has produced this film about Salvatore. Artist Salvatore Zalfreya is painting a major series on Australian native flora. Morning light is the first of three panoramas, or great circles, depicting the arrival of the day. I started with the, the beginning of light on the earth, the beginning of dawn, and then I'm going to stop in mid-morning. I began filming with Salvatore several months ago, and I'm not sure why, but I have to make this film about Salvatore. He's a wonderful painter who takes on enormous personal challenges. So, yes. sorry, th this is your newest panel here. Yes, this but, one but up here. How many panels are there all together? 25, Richard, 25. We've got in here, um, in total at the moment, 18 panels. Complete, at this moment. There'll be another seven to go. And that will make it how long? A long, a, a hundred feet long. A hundred foot feet long? Feet long, yep, yep. It's in our Italian tradition to do monumental scale work, and, and I find it very, very exciting and very, very challenging. So, Salvatore, you, you love colour, don't you? Yes, yes. Colour, colour to me is the most important thing and I think that colour is, uh, for me, the most important uh, instrument to express my emotions and my vision. Just by some miracle that I've got this sense of colour and being a colourist, because without colour you, you cannot express the great subtlety of harmony of nature and, the, and the, the tones and the shadows we have before us every day. His interpretation of it is completely different to any other Australian artist's interpretation. As a painter, it's such a, a real, real challenge to express the, the way I perceive the light. So it's almost impossible to paint light capturing something, a moment of creation, the light itself. It's, it's a transcending moment of spirit, vision and feeling. It's quite an incredible, I'm sure we all agree, that it's really 25 separate panels, is it's that correct? 25 panels makes one painting, one vision. Mm -hmm. uh, it's two years to paint, to two create, years. two years' work. Yeah. Uh, it's a total sort of a commitment. You are totally involved, consumed. Mm. Uh, you and your and the image become one, mm -hmm. which must be like that. There's no nothing in between no. you and the creation. Right. Yes. Okay. Well, I've, I've got another little bit of a clip that I've taken out in relation to your family. Yes. So I'll show that to everybody, and then um, we can ask you about your sure. family. Okay. Sure. Sure. In the bed early in the morning. The series is called the Appassionata. Passionate life, or the passion, yeah, the passion, yeah. One's passionate life. It's a very sort of a. That's a good title, I think. The church then, for us, 
played a big role. For the workers in Italy, whatever part of Italy, whether south, north, or east, or west, um, the church had a, a profound role for the masses of the people to educate them, to enlighten, enlighten them, to enrich them. So, so the church was a, the, was the actual theatre for us, and so all the seasons had a special event, a special festival event. And so as a child, these things, it's fantasy, mystery, experience, and, and the boy, they're like etchings in your mind, you know? They never go away. Is this where you lived, Salvatore? It's called Via Lavina. Uh, Via Lavina. Via Lavina, where I lived, where I grew up as a child, where I, where, where I was born. Yes, I'm the youngest of eight and that was our, our house where we lived, slept, ate and it's uh, probably five streets from the main square of Borgia itself, the old part of Borgia. My experience as a child was that the, the church was um, a great sense of visual mystery. As a child, you saw these beautiful images on the walls, which I found very inspiring. And so if there was a boy about five or six, I would go around and knock at the neighbours and ask if they have anything to give me, not food or cakes or toys, but these images, which I could then uh, do my own emulate into little sculptures. It's a, it's a part of, of, of Italy which has got a very high hills or mountains, and uh, it's very sort of a rural part of, of Italy, a lot of farming, but it can be very hard to earn, earn a living. My father, of course, um, I left for Australia when I was about, I think, three years old. I remember this, I had a great uh, turmoil, turmoil of, of uh, emotion going on. More um, for my mother being unhappy, losing her, her loved one, which was close to going away to a new world because these people in the part of Italy, like in particular Borgia, they did not know where Australia was. And so my mother was seeing her, her man leaving with all, all those kids behind to this unknown world. Erano tempi un pochettino crudi. Questa è la casa del nonno Gaetano. E io e Salvatore eravamo qua che mangiavamo eh, col nonno, con la nonna e poi andavamo nell'orto a mangiare le lattughe eh, mangiavamo le more se, se si ricorda benissimo ci ricordiamo benissimo e ci volevamo tanto bene è una situazione difficile perché c'era un po' di fame anzi loro stai la casa del nonno era il rifugio mo peccatormo che veniva, venivamo tutti a mangiare il padre praticamente lavorava aveva il carro con i buoi We'd go out uh, working uh, in the, my, my grandfather's farm, growing wheat. For the artists, it's beautiful. It's just so um, visually inspiring. And, and for me, it was a great uh, beginning of my embryo as the artist to be inspired by those simple uh, farming lifestyle of where I could walk in the fields with my, with my mother or my sisters and experience nature as a child. So I think those first few years of our life are crucial that we evolve our emotions and our visual sensations as well. When he came to Australia, everything he saw in Sydney hit him like a blinding flash and he thought it was absolutely marvellous. Now, it was as though he's never lost that. It's as though that colossal brain shock has just kept on going because he does find things to be totally astonishing and he does have that, that childlike enthusiasm and wonder. It's never gone. I remember as a child coming to Australia that my father came to the uh, port at the, uh, I guess, Piemont, where the boat berth, and uh, then we, we caught the Manly Ferry, and we came to Seaforth. 
and the house was on a half an acre of land at that time. Uh, this house was built inside of a giant cow shed. This is Seaforth in 1956 when I came to Australia. I went to the local school. As I got much more, a little bit older, I went to the Manly Dam. So my world was very much sort of closed in world, you know. My father had a choice to go either to America, Argentina, Australia, and he came to Australia. The doors were open to come to Australia, and, and, the, and he had here thousands of Yugoslavs, thousands of them. Yugoslavs, Greeks, Italians, Germans, French, they all came out here, Spanish, and they came to build, a lot of them, the Hydra, you know. And of course, the Europe was completely, England, the whole lot was just completely, it was a, a mess, you yeah, know, by the Second World War. And so, when young men, like my father, had a large family, of course, he came to Australia. My father was a, a very, very strong, physically strong, domineering man. He used to play the family one against the other. He could not really understand how his youngest son, who in his own words would say a million times, I work so hard for you, I work down to Hydro and the mountain to bring you out here, give you a good education, get you a good job, a trade, what do you do? I want to be a bloody painter. And so we had a terrible times together. And so my mother played a big role to share with me this uh, fascination with art. So you were a really great friend. A very, not, not a mother, a, a friend who understood me. And that's very important, to be understood. Yeah, you know? really, very, very real, isn't it? Yeah, they are. It's <laughs> isn't it? But it's so typical of fathers who won't expect a lot more. Uh, but I bet, I bet, as your father, he's no longer with us, obviously. But what did he, did he see your success? Or did well, he my father was very, um, he was a very proud man, extremely proud. Yes, yes. And, and he felt that he wanted the best for me, of course. Yeah. And, of course, in the new environment, new culture, he could not really comprehend how this could his son could really make a living. Yes. Uh, and so that was a bit difficult. So he was a, a very, um, he was a very passionate man, very strong, very uh, uh, proud of his family. And, and I think that sort of took a while to sort of uh, understand this individual in the family to be what I am, you know? Mm -hmm. And you must understand that, and you must um, appreciate because it's the, had the great compassion, great strength, and yet, there was a bit of sort of a miss, not quite there, you know? Yeah. And so how many of your other, your siblings come out to Australia? Did they all come out? Yes, yeah. apart from the uh, older sister, they're all here. Yeah. In fact, there's one here tonight. Oh, my, right. my brother, living yes. brother, and my nephew is here. Right. They come tonight to uh, watch this event. Mm -hmm. um, but they're all here in Sydney. Yes. Uh, yeah. And we all enjoy, I think what we enjoy among the, I guess, the... Um, being Italian, we enjoy this sort of warm intimacy of friendship and family, mm -hmm. unity, you know, we have yeah. uh, different emotions, different, but down when it comes to the real nitty gritty, we really stick together, and yeah. that to me is a real family, mm -hmm. meaning of a family. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. No, okay. And what, what did your, grand, did your grandparents do anything, or did they just sort of have vineyards? Or? Uh, all my, uh, I guess, from my memory and uh, what I knowledge I have, they were all people from the farm, from the land. Yeah. And I think, looking back now for myself, was a really great, uh, for me, was very important to have had that chance to grow in that environment, to understand life, the, the form of uh, the flower, to see those olive trees, those lovely rolling hills. And I think it was very good to see, able to be born in a small town like that, in the lovely landscape where you feel at peace and you were quite secure. In my case, very much so. Having my family, my sisters, my brothers all around me. Yeah. It was very special. Have you been back to Italy? Oh, several times. Yes. Several yes. times, yes. yeah. And uh, each time I go back, I have a different sort of um, uh, understanding, perspective, because things have changed mm -hmm. from the 50s to the present. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's still there, and you are reminded um, how the, the history of Italy and how rich it is is so, so vital. Uh, is, are there many family members left over there where you came One from? sister. She's, oh, yeah. oh, she's in uh, further uh, north uh -huh. to Calabria, in the same oh, area. Okay. Yeah. So when you first came out here, did you speak English? Not a word. Not a word? Not a word, no, no, no. You, did you have to go straight to school? I went straight to school. I went first to infant school for about four weeks, 
then went to primary school, oh, all very local. Oh, right. But I certainly picked up very quickly. Yes. Are you documenting your family tree? Yes. Not really, no, I have not, no. no. You have really, in, in effect, documented your family life. Well, that's yeah. because ah, of the, uh, the, the filmmaker, yes. Richard Mordant, yes. felt he should um, take, uh, go back, get some sort of structure of the family, mm -hmm. uh, how we evolved. That yes. part of the generation, really. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, that part, good. yes, yes. Okay. Well, you've done some really incredible artwork. Thank which, you. Um, as I said, I knew <coughs> nothing about Salvatore until I saw this wonderful mm. film. Yes. And um, I'm just going to show you a few of the beautiful artwork that he has done. He did find in the Psalms a spectacular subject. He's the kind of person who had a fairly vigorous imagination with, a, with a, a strong sense of what I call the Fellini-like fantasy. So translating those into a modern idiom and giving them all the kind of um, idiosyncratic, uh, indulgent, sensuous and uh, often quite vulgar, uh, at times quite sensitive and emotional interpretations. He could pile every human sentiment into those paintings, and he did. Any painting by an artist like Salvatore is ultimately about, about him, about him the artist, him the human being, him looking at himself, him expressing all his contradiction. He's the ultimate voyeur in a way. And standing back and looking at, through the, the stories of, and the parables of the Psalms, looking at that in, incredible range of, of, of human activity, human sensibility, creating this composition. And then the ultimate voyeur, he puts not only his friends and people he knows into the picture, but every now and then, he puts himself into the picture as well. Now, that is the voyeur you know, extraordinaire, because the voyeur is becoming almost a participant. And yes, that, that has been a big part of my psalms. I, the boy, the narrator, innocently becoming aware of what happens between two people. I turn the psalms to my life and the life which we know the ongoing trials of living. What I loved about him was that there was this incredibly sort of gregarious Calabrian spirit still alive and in a, in a, in a sort of visual psyche which has been dominated by the landscape, here was an Italian artist living here in Sydney with all the, all the dramatic energy of somebody who'd found fulfilment less in the place but more in the people. When you're painting somebody that you know and particularly with Salvatore if you've ever sat for a portrait for him you know he peers at every part of you even if it's not going to be in the painting takes photographs of you your hands your nose your ears every every veil that you've you've carefully um, hidden yourself behind, is pulled off. Every person in those pictures has been peeled to death by Salvatore. And I see myself as, as an all-purpose model. And not only has it been my face, but it's been my limbs, various parts of my body appear in different paintings. <laughs> quite incredible. You, you remind me of Alfred Hitchcock because he always puts oh, himself right. in the movies, doesn't he? So you've done a bit the same. But, yeah. so, yeah. but so what do you do? What do you enjoy most about doing with your work? What is it? Is it? Is it finding the person or the scene, or is it actually dissecting them and like what part of it gives you the most pleasure, or is it just the natural? Well, when I paint the human form, the human figure, I I guess we instinctively look towards what makes that person, that's our instinctive response. And when I have done in the past many portrait commissions, it's very hard because you're walking a very tight rope and you've got to try 
uh, the, the way you perceive yourself, the way I see you, we have a, our own image how we think we look. So our role, when you come to say to me to paint your portrait, first you know you must know my work so you get some idea what to expect. And so um, the what we have a challenge is that you might say your nose a different shape, I see a different angle, and so beyond. And in the end, all those elements of the of the face, the structure of the face, is really reveals the the emotion of the person. And so the true painter is must get behind the superficial look or expression. And and when I feel really um, pleased when I hear from my um, various people that say to me, Salvatore, you have, I can see my father in my face. Or I can see my mother, like my dear friend here, Maria Venuti, she has told me that they see her mother in her portrait. Well, that to me it shows that I have actually painted the essence of the person's character and spirit. So now, that's portrait painting. So you're, so you're getting the personality. Absolutely, the personality yeah, because we all, we, all wear, this, we all wear a mask, <coughs> yes. all of us. And then until that mask is dropped, we still have this sort of facade. So our role is go beyond that mask right. and really capture uh, what makes the person, the spirit of the man or the woman, and that becomes what we call great art. Great art transcends all fashions, all, all characters, that's that, that other level of the human spirit. And that's the thing about painting, whether it's a face or a landscape or a, or a glass. It's, it becomes something else. But um, also, you've won many awards, I believe, so would you like to tell the audience about some um, of the awards? Yes, well, I remember. I have won uh, the Solon Prize three times. That's in the South Wales. Every year we, they have um, three major awards, the Archibald, which is portraiture, then the Wynn, which is landscape, to do with Australian landscape, and the other is the Salmon, which is about uh, genre, composition of the <coughs> figures, mainly figures or landscape. And uh, of course, with the, with the Salmon Prize, that was given by the architect, uh, the Salmon architect, way right back in, I think, in the 20s or earlier, when he left in his will, it was to inspire artists to create images for mural designs. He was an architect. So as you've gone by, these one by, there, there's been a breakdown in, in composition and approach. So the ones I have, I've uh, won with have been always for the human figure, the composition of the human figure. Um, I won there in 77, 79 and 82. Then I have won since then the power bequest for six months to to Paris. Uh, um, then we went, at the time I won the, the Churchill Fellowship to do three months of fresco painting in Italy, which is very enjoyable, very exciting and very challenging. So, and other things as well. Yeah, let's give you an idea. It's quite astounding. It's wonderful. So obviously, do you, do you have time for any other sort of hobby or interests besides painting? <laughs> no hobby, just life. Painting, enjoying life. <coughs> my Stephanie here and my the father gardening. What? Yes, I love gardening. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. I love gardening. I love to have lots of flowers, roses, wildflowers. Yes, that I enjoy immensely. Yes. So when you're gardening, do you, I suppose you even dissect the weeds, do you? Think well, that I, look, I, I walk around the garden and I look at colour. I'm always aware of colour and form and light. Uh, and I just take this in, in my mind and I digest this sort of image, how that affects my vision to create that painting in the future. Yeah. And all the time painting. I'm looking at people, I'm painting all the time. Right. Yes. Yeah. And okay. now he has an iPad and he takes thousands and thousands of, paint, of uh, pictures. Of and even tonight, as we were waiting for our friend Renata to pick us up to take us here, mm -hmm. he yes. saw some beautiful clouds and he well, yeah. rushed out. Oh, wonderful oh, sunset, most oh, wonderful oh, sunset. The colours. Oh. Life is a wonder. It's a wonderful ongoing experience. So tell me a bit more about morning light. What? What prompted you yes, to okay. start such a magnificent what painting? Made, yes. What made me that dear modern life? I think I, I've come to a point in my life, in my career, that I had exhausted the human figure. I had um, two or three commissions, dealing about nature, and in a way this sort of propelled me and made me to open and look the new, the world around me, which I've been here most of my life, and see the colours of Australia 
uh, and the bush and the wildflowers, which I've never seen before, because when you come from another uh, place in Europe or obviously other parts of the world, we have as a child a fixed image um, of what we sort of treasure as our first memories uh, in, in our life and our mind impressions. I was asked to look at the Australian flora of Richmond and Windsor area, my area as well, was a commission to do some mosaics for this uh, company. And so I really, that actually opened this amazing new world of colour patterns of Australia and the trees and the wonderful subtlety of colour. The, the light and the colour starting with the beginning of dawn until late morning. And that was for me has been an enormous challenge, uh, a very demanding um, vision to uh, accomplish. Did you, did you um, paint a lot of that? At in the Blue Mountains? Or? Yes, I, paint, I did paint that, uh, that painting in my Carajon studio, uh, Low Blue Mountain, which is a beautiful area, which reminds a bit, I guess, a bit like Italy or Calabria or part of France. It's very, very beautiful. And, and so the, um, a, lot of the th a lot of the flowers came from West Head near um, Palm Beach, you know, Colorado, and also the Low Blue Mountains. So it's, it's a vision, a vision of colour and light and life being born every day. Uh -huh. yeah. And I believe you had a bit of a fright. Um, yes, there was a bushfire, um, yes. When it's, I'll, show, uh, I'll just yeah. show everybody this. This is really scary stuff. Yeah, really We've got a, a, a very bad bushfire, Richard. You can see the smoke. And uh, everybody's very alarmed. And there's been warning about moving out here as well from here. So it's very, uh, for me, it's extremely unsettling. As people are leaving the Blue Mountains, Salvatore is going back in to take his paintings out. He can't risk losing anything at this stage. This is a huge fire. It spreads right through the... Oh, place. yes, exactly. It's, it's, it's uh, over 300 kilometres, you know? It's huge. It's enormous, Richard. The fires continued for two weeks, ravaging the Blue Mountains, the worst fires in New South Wales for 50 years. And then slowly, the fire emergency came under control. Look at that blue, look the, at look the smoke, Richard. Incredible, isn't it? Salvatore is now visiting his property every day. Today, he's brought back all his paints. The flies are shocking, aren't they? Dreadful flies. Welcome to Australia. Look, my house is bare, Richard. Look at that. Terrible. <laughs> Not very nice. Welcome home, Salvatore, to your creation space. Well, Rich, to my um, disappointment, we've been really, I guess, in a terrible sort of a shock uh, and bringing to our attention, to my attention, how we are so vulnerable uh, with the, the, the wild bushfires. Six days later, we bring Salvatore's paintings of morning light back to his studio at Carajan. Because uh, I lived on the, I lived on the bush for many years, and we actually got evacuated twice. Yeah. Do you ever feel the urge to to do a, a painting of of a bushfire? No, I haven't. I one? just sort of um, find that very sort of um, very yes, very overpowering, very dramatic, yes. and and uh, and the sense of fear, of course, yes. gets to you, yes. and yes. and try and control that fear. Mm -hmm. And because my case to protect my paintings, yes, that must have like, been like a so clucky, like a clucky hen, you know, oh, take oh. me back out of here. All the yes. work I was doing, I could not bear the idea. You were like a mother. So yeah. it was was yeah. fine. It was yes. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Now that yeah. that would have been a very frightening experience. Yes, very unpleasant. Imagine. Very yeah. unpleasant. So yeah. okay, so I've just got one more video that I'm going to show you all, yeah. um, and that's in relation to the final bit of morning light and where they they hung it up. On oh, the, great! The yes, galleries. yes, yes. At the opening. Okay, okay. good. I've got to the, the moment where the light is finally has come to being and then you see 
the forms, the flowers much more clearly as the sun comes up. So when you start, starting from the very beginning, and you just see the beginning of the slight pink in the sky, the dark sky, and it slowly becomes like, like a lightning, and then on it becomes more and more, and then the whole, the whole sky just fragments. You can see the flowers as though they're like stars in the, in the green sky, just start to emerge, shimmering away, and then slowly here, at last, the sun is really coming out, and then on the three, four panels, the light has just burst. Right, and so are you on top of this now? Because it's like Yes, I think I am. I think, listen, if I'm up to panel 14, yes, I am. I really, because I'm, I'm determined to get this accomplished in my time and, and nothing will get in my way, nothing. Debussy, mm -hmm. uh, Ravel, mm -hmm. the, the wonderful evokes a sound of, of nature and colour and because there's a lot of, between painting and music, they're like cousins and that to me is the bar I have for myself typically to accomplish how these people can get wonderful sound, wonderful composers and the same in painting and that's very important. When Salvatore can't paint, he feels that inside his head there are millions of images that it's uncomfortable for him. It's a bit like a carousel with a lot of slides. Start on I first. I get a bit sort of a, a bad company, oh, a, bit, a, bit, a bit moody, a bit sort of frustrated, yes. yes. And then I sort of explode and, yes. and continue on. Yes. Oh, Maybe yes. Maria would like to on come on now. And listen, before I say anything, I brought something most unusual. Oh. It's a Zofreya piece. Oh. But Zofreya's <laughs> never done this before. Oh. And uh, I'll just show it, darling. <laughs> it's a wild grevillea oh. on a handbag. Oh. Aren't I lucky? That was my request. The only one in the world and the only one ever in the world, oh, yeah. darling. Isn't it brilliant? Look at that. How do I feel walking around with this? And the, um, it's for sale, if anyone. <laughs> oh, darling. This has been absolutely fantastic. So pleased to be here. Now, that's good, because that, apparently what happened, it all started with Maria appearing here um, several right. months ago and Salvatore... Um, Seeing um, Maria, have I got that right? And you, yes, yes, yes. And you yes. suddenly became inspired. Is very, that correct? Very, very <laughs> there she is. <laughs> my, actually, my motto in life, which I made up, um, is live for today and let life surprise you tomorrow. And I was doing a show, my Christmas show, at a lovely club that I appear at, a lovely cabaret, Slide, and they came along. And next minute, I get this amazing email, darling, from Stephanie Clare to say that, um, you know, would I be interested and he would love to paint me for the Archibald and I'm a guy. So I'm on Dr. Google, uh, not being an arty girl, but honestly, darling, it's um, amazing. And uh, so basically it started... You are, that's right. <laughs> Can you explain, <laughs> this is how you first start your portrait, is that correct? Yes, exactly, that's it, yes. I, that's the sketch, that's yes. A direct, that's sketch. yes, on the canvas, a oh, sketch. Okay, yes. You get the overall form yeah. uh, and you get the warmth, in this case a wonderful, warm, sensuous Maria. woman, Maria. Yeah. There yeah. she is. I can see the title's A Woman of Passion. <laughs> Look, you know, I know I never shut up, but I must say, can I just say about um, doing a portrait, uh, Salvatore loved the red hat. He saw it on Dr. Google again on some photos. 
And it just evolves the look, what you want to do. And I did that Sicilian hand position. <laughs> So you can do, you can think about that with what you like. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, there's all sorts of stories for that one. But, you know, a lot of artists, like uh, for the Archibald particularly too, they take a few photos, then they do one or two sittings, and take everything from a photo. No good. No bad, good. Bad, bad, bad. No. We had nine sittings because this man wants perfection, he wants... I even got lunch. We'd sit, we'd sit. I demanded lunch after the first week. I said, I like it, I like it. And then, we'd do about an hour, I think. Yeah, yeah, Would that yeah, be right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Then the lunch would be on, your auntie yeah. pasty. And we'd talk, and we'd talk, and we'd talk, talk, yeah. And talk about religion, sex, and something else. Like the, the, whole, the, whole, the whole spectrum. As a sitter, Artist and sitter. As a sitter, you surrender yourself. You got to. You got to. You got to just completely let go and give yourself to the artist. Well, yeah. Salvatore yeah. has a tube, like a little paint tube of paint of lapis lazuli, and it's about two thousand dollars. And darling, see the um, folds yes, in the to. black yes, there in the little yeah. sheer. Yeah. Well, can you see? See the little the blue lines that have depicted the folds in the fabric? That's all lapis, lapis, lapis. lazuli. Yes. It's, uh, there's probably about six grand's worth there. Well, you won't be <laughs> You won't be every six. And the thing I love, the, yeah, see that there's a diamante bracelet there that was my mother's. And Salvatore put the lapis lazuli, it, he puts that behind the jewels, like this, like it, that, it for it all to it stand glow, out. Dazzle. See, I love this detail. Oh, I? yeah, of course. And I know you're enjoying this, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> and what else, darling? Um, Just your expression. So he's brought out the wise old woman. Oh, <laughs> baby. Oh, I don't know. It's well, a wise it's woman, anyway. A wise and knowing woman. The knowing, ah, knowing woman. Don't mess with me, woman. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. Thank it's you, really honey, spectacular, my pleasure. Great joy. Okay, Great so joy. unfortunately we have to finish up early because we've got another show on. But what I want to do is quickly do um, some question and answer. This is going to be your life's work. And was there a significant painting or a significant moment that has sort of cemented that this is, this is where I'm going to go? Or uh, I think from my childhood, probably at age of 10, I began using... Um, um, pastel paint, you know, um, what do you call them? Watercolour. Yeah, watercolour. Uh, at school. And, but I knew all along it was my great desire to be what I am, painting, uh, express my life through paint on canvas or paper or wood block or etching plate. Um, and I think, uh, I think the, the part I found very challenging was when I left school, uh, teenager, I found it very hard because my schoolmates were not into the uh, into the arts at all, and I felt completely uh, alone uh, in part of Sydney. And so I had to um, I had to this strength, this inner call in me. Uh, I had to overcome all my um, anxiety <coughs> about the future. There's no guarantee of earning a living, but somehow you must do it. And so what's important is, I think, in the end, is that when you look back on your life, you have done what you had to do. What was the first major work that really sort of put you on the map <coughs> um, as an artist in Australia? I guess my first um, major break was the, uh, winning the first Solomon Prize in 1977. I was 31. And then, oh, and then yeah. soon, and my, in fact, my first one-man show, I was 20 years of age. I, I enjoy um, anything uh, inspires me. I feel very excited. I don't have any fear uh, of approaching that form, the theme, uh, the image, anything at all. I find it very exciting. What all these um, themes... Uh, um, I'm drawn to, it really is about um, creating an image, a thought, in this case in visual uh, 
uh, expression, painting or drawing, is to get that, that universal mystery about life. Life is, is a wonder. What Life is no... There's no... We use the word God because being human we need to have you know, the male or the female to identify with, but something which is amazing energy. There's no end, there's no beginning. And, wow. and, and nothing dies because, because we are all energy. Yeah. Uh, and I read somewhere in one of those um, um, scientist books of uh, astronomy and where this uh, famous character from America said that we're made from the, from the dust of stars. I'd, I'd come in here and yeah. say that he longs to paint beauty. This is in yes. answer to your question as well. Yes. He longs for beauty and he wishes to, to commemorate yeah, beauty. Think, yes. And he doesn't want to, he doesn't like to paint ugly, ugliness. Yeah. So that's one thing that drives him. I have done that in my work anyhow, in, in my Psalms, the way I have tried to depict the Psalms, the Psalms, you know, from the Old Testament. But the Psalms are really a, about human suffering about um, understanding the human condition and how we deal with life and how these people way back when they were when they made these wonderful poems they are poems really uh, how they were able to struggle with their try with their trials in the world around them at the ancient times and it's today today we have this constant um, uh, fear destruction death ugliness that's painful and I have done it in my psalms because when I first showed the psalms at the Macquarie Galleries, the people were quite surprised to see my psalms dealing with the human condition. Going through all this in my life, I've now come a point in my career in my life where I'm seeking the, the essence of beauty. The, the beauty to me is of all creation. It is so wonderful and that gives me the greatest inspiration in that I see myself becoming one with nature, where my spirit and nature become one. That is art for me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any other questions with you? No? Okay. Well, look, I'd like to thank Salvatore thank and you. Stephanie and Maria for coming this evening. Wow. Wow. I think you all agree. I mean, I wasn't a particularly arty person either. Uh, in looking at art in the past, yes. Salvatore, yes. I haven't learned to appreciate it as much as I have yes. in looking at your That's paintings. Thank you very so, much. Thank you. thank you for coming. Thank you all. Thank you. So listen, we, I have to go in. It's beautiful. Ask girls. Yes, thank you. It's beautiful. Yeah. That Stephanie's Three cheers good. for the three of them. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip. Hooray. Now enjoy the evening. Thank you. Well done. Well done.